You ran HHS. Uh, you know these things. What is the problem? Is this ideology? What's the argument for not mandating max masks? The problem is that uh, the political leadership of this country uh, politicized masks. And now across the country, people are pushing back, depending on their political party. It's awful. A mask, uh, I can't imagine a mask being political at all when it's the simplest thing we can do. We can do low tech things. We're not asking people to do high tech, sophisticated things. Wear a mask, practice social distancing, and wash your hands. Um, most of the big strides in public health over the years have been the simplest kinds of things. Um, sanitation, for example. Only when we got to vaccines did we start saving lives through other kinds of approaches. But in this case, we know what to do. We know how to control this virus in our communities, and we just need to do it. And there's no tension between the economy and public health, as far as I'm concerned. We cannot open the economy unless we hit this virus with a hammer in our communities and we all work together. And that's one thing we heard again from Dr. Fauci, that it's not an either or, that it's a both, that there are things you can do that'll both improve the health of people and improve the economy at the same time. Where is the business community in Florida, particularly South Florida, which you know so well? Because one might think that some of the business community might say, you know what, we need to get this thing under control to help us just as an economic matter. You know, they're, they're of two minds. They want to open to get some income, um, but at the same time, they understand they need to protect their workers and protect the community. So they're split all over the place, and there's not clear leadership from the business community saying, hey, let's beat this virus, and then we can all open together. Uh, so uh, let's talk about another subject really important in Washington right now, which is this stimulus bill that we keep hearing about and the conflict. We just talked a brief time ago to Senator Chuck Grassley, who said basically the Democrats are not willing to compromise. Is there compromise going on? Are the, the parties going to meet somewhere in the middle? Well, they already have. I think we have agreement on the small business loans, on taking the money that hasn't been spent and uh, stretching out the PPP uh, for small businesses, the grants, basically their grants. I I'm sure that we'll reach some agreement on school money. Uh, we're fighting over state and local money. What is state and local money? It is firefighters, it is police officers, it is teachers. It's not some gray bureaucrats. It's the most important people in our community to keep us safe. Um, and to keep our communities organized. And, and then, of course, there's the $600. Um, David, people are calling my office for the first time in my career. People are calling my office crying. They're desperate and they're scared because they need money to pay their rent, to buy food for their families, uh, to protect their kids. Um, and, and millions of people all over this country have lost their jobs through no fault of their own. And the idea that we're fighting over $400 uh, per week is ridiculous when what the Republicans put in their package was paying for a tax cut for business people who uh, went out to dinner. It's called the three martini lunch. Why should poor people who have lost their jobs be paying for that? Um, $600 is only reasonable. What they have proposed isn't workable. In my, in my community, in Florida, some people have still not gotten their unemployment. Many people have still not gotten the IRS check that they were supposed to get, the $1,200, because the IRS is sending it out in groups because they don't have capacity. You start fooling around with this unemployment system, many of the states have legacy systems they cannot reprogram for months. So we're talking about putting people, Americans in desperate situations. It makes no sense. I don't know anyone in the business community or any place else that doesn't think that $600 a week is too much money. And there's no evidence that it keeps people from going to work. People in my community want to go to work, but the, the hotels are closed. The cruise lines are closed. The restaurants, for the most part, are closed. There's no place to go to work. They need their money. And by the way, it's their money. They've been paying taxes for years and years. It's their money. And all we're doing is bringing it back when they need it.